What's going on, everybody? My name is Tech, and welcome to this week's episode of the Reseller Greatness Podcast. We have 15 or so in the can, and I could not be more pleased with the reception and with the reaction and all of the comments that you guys put below. It is very, very much appreciated. If you guys ever have any questions, please post it below. I'm happy to answer them. I respond to every single comment that you guys leave. So, um, Inside of the group, we have a 499s here, and I'm, I'm recording this at the end of February. It's going to get released sometime late March on YouTube. Um, so on Patreon, they do get these a month early or so. And also for the 499s here, I do a live coaching call the first week of every single month. So if you are in the 499s here, keep an eye on Patreon because that one is coming up on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So if you're listening to this now, the first Monday of the month, let's jump in there. Let's answer questions. Anything you guys need help with, I am there for you. Um, just as a little bit of gratitude, just showing my thanks for you guys being there and getting the early episodes of the podcast. So again, I appreciate everybody for checking them all out. Um, this week, I wanted to discuss the summer slowdown. And the great thing about the summer slowdown is that we know it's going to come. We know it's going to be here. We know when our birthday comes. We know when Christmas comes. We know when the Super Bowl is. We should know when summer slowdown is for our business. And sometimes the summer slowdown may be in the wintertime. Sometimes it may be in the fall. It all depends on what kind of product we are selling. Some stores never experience a summer slowdown just due to the variety and the product mix that they have in their store. So the question you may be asking yourself is, why in February are we making a podcast and having a discussion about the summer slowdown? And we have been talking about it lately in the group. And if you want to find year-round success, you have to plan and forecast accordingly. So if you are a seller and your inventory is skewed maybe towards a season, now is the time to start thinking about start buying, start stocking items getting these items into your store that do coincide with the seasonality of not only eBay, not only sales, not the seasons, but also the shoppers. So if you have a whole store of jackets, all you have is jackets. Well, in April or so, in May, it's going to be bad news for you because those are going to be the slowest months throughout the year. May, June, July, August, and then in September, your jackets are going to start picking up again. So what we need to do is we need to make an effort, we need to make a decision, and we need to go out and source items that complement the items that we already have. So seasonality is a thing for most people. A lot of people, they'll have a lot of jackets, and in the winter, hey, we're doing great, we're posting our 90-day totals, our sales are up. We're on cloud nine. I'm ready to take over 2024. I'm ready to crush it, kill it. I'm ready. And then now it's the end of February. And a lot of that enthusiasm is gone because the seasonality of the sales are November, December. That's Q4. There's more shoppers on eBay. So if there are more shoppers on eBay, there's going to be more sales on eBay. In the summertime, historically, there are less shoppers on eBay because kids are out of school, people are taking summer vacations, people are taking trips. In addition to that, the items that sell in the summertime don't have that great average sale price like a Patagonia jacket does or a North Face jacket does or a, a Ralph jacket does. You know, it's very, it's very common to walk into a thrift store, any thrift store in America, and you can find a jacket that's worth $30 plus shipping. $40 plus shipping, $50 plus shipping, and who knows, you may even hit a home run for $100 plus shipping. That's great. That's fine. That's dandy. That looks good on the 90 days total. That that in combination with $8 for a padded flat rate or $15 to ship a jacket, and now that brings our total from $55 to $60 or to $65 for our average sale price plus um, whatever the customer has paid in sales tax, looks great on the 90-day total. Looks absolutely phenomenal. But that is nowhere to be seen in the summertime when the jackets are not flying off of the shelves. We don't get a lot of these $30, $50, $100 sales 
in button ups or polo shirts or t shirts or shorts, bathing suits, items that actually do have velocity in the summertime, that high average sale price is not there. And that's okay because there is seasonality. And we have to understand and we have to know that there is seasonality involved with not only selling on eBay, but a brick and mortar store um, for big companies. There's seasonality to everything. So historically for my business personally, and, and your business can be different and that's okay. For my business historically, my busiest times are November through May. November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Those six or seven months are my busiest time because we're coming off of Q4 and Christmas. January, maybe people go back to eBay and get stuff that they didn't get. Maybe people have gift cards. Maybe people are still in the spending spirit. Um, and then tax time. Tax time is really beneficial for me as a pre-owned clothing seller. And historically, that has been my best time is right around tax time when people are getting those refunds. So if that's the best time, I still do find in the summertime, but I understand that it's going to be different. There's less shoppers and they have different interests, which is okay. Because we have to remember, it's okay to be slow in the summertime as long as net-net we're up year over year, and that is fine. And how do we know, how do we discover, are we doing okay? Because this is something very tricky. If you go to your traffic tab, if you go to your sales tab, this is very important, very, very important. If you go to your traffic tab, if you go to your sales tab, and you go, maybe even right now, maybe next month, if you go on right now and you see your impressions are down 11%, you see your sales are down 8%. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. Why? Why is it not the end of the world? Because the way that the default setting is set up on our traffic tab and our sales tab is this section of 30 days versus the previous 30 days. Maybe December through January, you crushed it. It was Q4. There were shoppers. Maybe you had some great sales. You had a great month. February, those shoppers are not there. Maybe you missed a couple of those great sales. So January versus February, you may be down 5%. You may be down 3%. You may be down 10%, 15%. You may be down, but technically speaking, you may not have even done anything wrong or anything incorrect. It's just the way that the data is set up. And data can be set up any kind of way. Data can be skewed. And in this situation, the data by default of this 30 days versus previous 30 days is skewed because it's a very small sample size of 30 days versus 30 days. Last 30 days, maybe you had one home run sale that totally took your business to the next level for that month. And this month, maybe that sale is gone. You're down. But it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. You're doing anything bad. In combination with that, we also have the seasonality. Things go up, things go down. There's an ebb and there's a flow to business. There's an ebb and flow to eBay. It's like the tide. Water comes in, water goes out. But we still have to have more water coming in and staying in than what goes back out. So how can we get a good grasp on if we are doing good net-net year over year or net-net on a wider range? So if you have been selling on eBay, you have the luxury, if you've been doing it for a while, you have the luxury to step back as far as possible on your sales tab, on your traffic tab, and you can look at a wide range of data. You can go back and look and compare what you're doing today with what you were doing last year, what you were doing the year before. Great. If you have not been selling on eBay for a long time, that's okay. Just get as much data as you can and see which direction you are trending. That is the important part. So for me, since I started eBay before they had sales tab, traffic tab, I did it in, in the caveman days where we had to you know, draw buffaloes on the cave wall. I, I had to send smoke signals in order to advertise my listings. I didn't have the luxury of doing that. So what I always did, and this is something that you guys can do as well, and inside of the group, we have a bunch of people that do it. They, they call themselves the calendar crew. And I show these calendars all the time on the Tuesday call. And what I would do, and this is from 2018, what I would do is 
keep track of certain things, keep track of certain metrics. And maybe once upon a time in my eBay career was how many items I was listing per day. Write it on the calendar queue. We have to start putting this stuff on here so that way we can look at it later. So here's 2018. Here's a whole set of calendars from 2019. And if I look at these next to each other, I can see, okay, September 19 through September 18. Great. I'm up. That's all that matters at the end of the day. So what kind of stuff can we keep track of? We can keep track of how many we're listing per day, how many we're listing and how many are selling, how many up, how many out. We can keep track of what our gross sales total is, what our net sales total is, or what our profit is. We can keep track of what our profit is at the end of the week. There's a lot of different things that we can keep track of, and that can come in handy if we start keeping these calendars. And this is how you have to start developing your data. You're not going to get the data given to you. You're not going to have somebody on staff to do the data with you. So once upon a time, I didn't have calendars. I wrote it down, I scribbled it down, and I started keeping track. And as I started keeping track, it's very easy to see, okay, in the month of January of 2018, on Tuesday, the 9th of January, 2018, I had $821 profit. Great day. I can go look on this calendar, and I can go to January, and I can say, okay, on January the 9th, how am I doing? And one day versus one day, again, a very small sample size. So we have to be conscious always of the sample sizes. So on January 8th, January 9th, 2018, $831 profit. January 9th or January 8th, 2019, $927 profit. I'm, I'm edging up, I'm skewing up, which is great. And then at the end of the week, you can mark down how much profit you made at the end of the week. And then at the end of the month, you can count how much profit you made at the end of the month. So month over month, year over year. Year over year, it feels like we're doing the exact same thing. But, but thank you to the calendar, 2018, the profit for the month was $22,727. That was the profit. It's down there in the corner. January 2019, the profit was $31,439. This is January 18, January 19. So here you go. Over the course of one year, it's almost up $10,000 profit over the course of one year. Excellent. We can go to different years. We can keep track of our calendars. Here's another one. April 2018, total profit 28741 Very good. April 2019, total profit 43434 Excellent. This is how we begin to keep track of what we are doing. You could do gross sales, you could do total profit, you could do items that got listed, items that got sold, because eBay is very slow, it is very meticulous, it is a marathon, it is not a sprint. So if I didn't have these calendars to guide me to look back on, hey, what was my June like in, in 2016? What was my June like in 2014? What was it in, in 2020, 2023? I look back at these calendars and I can see the trajectory is going up. So that tells me I am doing the right thing. Now, if we go through these calendars, I know when my weakest months are. I know when my best months are. And that is also very important. So like I have already outlined to you, my best months, November through May. My worst months are the months outside of November through May. So I already know that. And because I know that, I don't get in trouble overspending or over leveraging myself because I have the data and I look at it. And that's why eBay is very difficult because we have to put 20 different hats on our head at any time throughout the day. We need to be purchasers. We need to manage cash flow. We need to be bookkeepers, accountants, logistics, shippers, customer service, our own photographers, everything, our, our, our own PR departments, we have to do everything. So do not get discouraged on this traffic and the sales tab because that is a small sample size. We cannot live and die day by day. We are not in business for one day. If you had a bad day yesterday and you had no sales, if you had to pay your entire year's bills off of yesterday's sales, then you're right, you're in trouble. You have big problems. But luckily for us, 
We have 365 days this year to make all the money that we need to pay our bills and to sustain ourselves personally. So one day is not going to make or break us. If we have a bad day, great. If we have a good day, great. That's why we work on averages. And that's why these calendars are good as well, because you could take this number at the bottom for your total profit after all of your fees and all of your expenses. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a podcast about six weeks ago. It's me standing in front of a chalkboard on the thumbnail, and the title is called Techonomics. That can teach you how to go through and get all of your profits after eBay fees, after your cost of goods. And that's a great entry to write in here on the, cal write in here on the calculator. Total profit for today on January 22nd, 2018 was $752. Excellent. That is a great place. To, that is a great thing to mark down and a great thing to keep track of. And net, net, month over month, net, net, year over year, the goal is to continuously to improve slowly because this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. So do not get trapped in the sales and the traffic tab by the default function. You can back out the function and get more data and, and get more options and a much clearer picture, but do not get trapped in the 30 by 30 verse. That is pretty much useless data. It's useless data to say that your March was worse than February by 8%. Year over year, that's what we are talking about. And net, net, net profit, year over year, we have to be up. We have to trend up. So since we do know that there is seasonality, since we do know that there is seasonality, it's outside of our control. We can't do anything about it. We can only adapt and we can only do the best that we can. What are some ways that we can offset the seasonality to maintain as flat as possible sales throughout the year. No peaks, no valleys, no big peaks, no low valleys. What can we do? First and foremost, we can be conscious of this and we can source items that are actually going to sell, source items that people are looking for. And this morning on the morning call, we went over insights that are right on eBay, right under everybody's noses. eBay has sourcing guides. And if you don't know how to find those, start looking around. We were in there, we were looking at trending categories, we were looking at trending item specifics, trending sizes, trending styles, trending everything. Everything is on there. eBay has provided it to us. It's right there. It's not hidden, but not a lot of people take advantage of it. So this morning, I went in there, I showed a bunch of people a bunch of different stuff that they never even knew about. I showed them how to find brands, how to find products, how to look at brands that are actually selling right now and how to find brands that will sell in the immediate future and also in the long term. It is right there. So we can find items that people are looking for now. And if you find items that people are looking for now, odds are those are items that are going to have much more profit. Why? That's a question. I'm going to pause for a second. Why would items that are in much more demand now and in the immediate future have more profit built into them? Why? The answer is if they are desirable and people are looking for them, those are going to be items that we do not have to promote the listing. We do not have to give a 10% promoted listing, a 15% promoted listings. These are not items that are going to sit. These are not items that are saturated. These are items that people are looking for and they want to buy. If people are looking for them and they want to buy them, these are items that we may not need to promote. If we do not need to promote them, then 5% comes back to us. 8% comes back to us. 15% comes back to us. Whatever you are promoting comes back to us. So promoted listings, as we've talked about in previous podcasts, is optional. We do not need promoted listings. Promoted listings can be used as a strategy. And if you are using promoted listings as a business practice, that is two different things. It is optional. We can pick up items that do not need promoted listings. We can pick up items that have a fast sell-through. We can pick up items that have enough margin in them 
where we can wait and let them marinate for the right buyer because we know based on numbers, based on the data, that that buyer is going to be there. And that is one of the biggest focuses inside of the group is everything that we talk about is backed up by the data. You know, very famous quote by Sean Carter, a.k.a. Jay-Z. He said, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. So we can have these conversations and we can say things, but unless the data backs it up, That is a lie, and a lie that is unchallenged becomes the truth. So when people are saying things, when we're talking to resellers locally, when we're at the bins, when we're inside of communities, when when we're engaged in conversations, if there is something, it's okay to challenge it. Challenge it, and if it cannot be backed up by, by actual numbers in black and white, because numbers do not lie, they are not emotional, if it cannot be backed up with numbers, then we really have to question it. And as I said, a lie that is unquestioned becomes the truth. So all of this stuff that we are talking about, all of the stuff that is in the group is stuff that is backed up by data. If it is not backed up by data, I am very clear. I'm clear on the Tuesday calls. I'm clear on the morning calls. I'm clear when I do the Wednesday live Q&As for all you guys on YouTube at 8 p.m. Turn on notifications if you want to see them. I am very clear and tell you, I am speculating on this. That's when it becomes my opinion. I don't speculate very much. A lot of it comes right down to the black and white. A lot of it comes right down to the data. That's why sell-through doesn't lie. That's why Terapeak information doesn't lie. That's why your numbers do not lie. That's why when I pulled out the chalkboard behind me, it doesn't lie. That's why we went on the sales calculator. It does not lie. So everything needs to be backed up by numbers. Otherwise, it's just a theory. And if we want to believe theories, no problem. If we're at the bins and engaged in conversation and we want to believe theories, no problem. But eBay has the data for us to make an informed decision to guide our business. So we can stock items that people want going into the following season. And I get this question a lot. Should I source based on season or should I list it when I get it? For me personally, and you could do whatever you wish, I am under the philosophy of list and wait. Do not wait and list. List and wait. I sell jackets in June. I sell swim trucks on Christmas. We have to remember eBay is a global marketplace. There are billions of people in the world. More buyers are outside of the United States than inside of the United States as on eBay as a whole. When it's summer up here, our good friend Mel back from burnout, it's winter in Australia. When it's winter up here, our good friend Mel in Australia, it is summer in Australia. There are people that travel. There are people that go on vacation. There are people that take trips. There are people that buy forward, smart buyers. There are opportunities where maybe somebody needs a jacket and Macy's doesn't have them stocked. No other store in the mall has jacket stock because malls stock for the season. So I am of the theory, I am of the school, list and wait rather than wait and list. So the caveats for wait and list are we're spending money and we have these piles of dead money that's not out working for us because no one is ever going to knock on your front door and say, hey, I know you are of the camp of the wait and list camp, but I have great news for you today. I'm here looking to see if you have a North Face Deep Tech because I've heard you have one in the pile that's unlisted. You're right, I do have it in the pile that's unlisted, but my pile is so large I cannot locate the North Face Deep Tech jacket today. Come back next week. No problem. I'll be back next week for that jacket. Or They can go on the eBay machine today and they can type in North North Face Deep Check Jacket and they can buy one from me for $250. The choice is up to the customer and the choice is up to you. So I am of the mentality list and wait because I want my money out there working. I don't want my money sitting dead in a pile, not at work. But again, that choice is yours. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But for me personally, I list and wait. I do not wait to list. 
So that is the second thing that we could do to offset the summer slowdown. The third thing that we could do, and what I have done, is I have an aged inventory markdown process. So what my percentage is and what my process is has no bearing in anybody that is listening to this. You need to take the framework of what we're talking about and need to tailor it to exactly what is going to work best for you. So for me, I have my inventory. After a certain amount of days, I mark my items down a certain percent. After a certain amount of more days, I mark my items down a certain amount of percent. On a certain amount of more days, I mark them down a certain amount of percent. And then in the summertime, where for my business personally, due to the gumbo of items that I have inside of my eBay store, my product mix, my prices, my keywords, my selection, during my slower times, I run my most aggressive markdown sale. Because if there's less shoppers on the platform, I want to make my offer more enticing. So if there's more buyers on the platform, we have more opportunity. It's classic supply and demand. If there's less shoppers on the platform, I want to take every single opportunity that I can get and be grateful for what is there at the time. So during the summertime, which is the slowest part of my business, it may not be for yours, and you may not know your slowest time because we don't have the calendars. Your slowest time, whenever it is, for me personally, historically, I have had good luck running my most aggressive aged inventory markdown process, which allows my, my sales to be pretty good all year round. Do I have better months than others? Absolutely, I do. But net, net, at the end of the year, all of my months are great because I'm thinking ahead like we are in the group. We are thinking many months down the road and we are getting ready for that now. We are getting our aged inventory process worked out. We, we are making sure that we are sourcing the proper items. We are opening up new brands. We are opening up new sell-through, new nuances, new opportunities, new things in certain brands that sell at different times. We are opening up our head, opening up our imagination. We are being curious. We are being confident with our buys. All of these things we are doing many months down the road. We are not living and dying month to month according to the sales tra traffic tab, which by default is 30 days versus 30 days. That's garbage. It's too small of a sample size. We're not getting too high. We're not getting too low. We understand that this is a marathon, not a sprint. We understand we are not living and dying by one day. When we do not have confidence in our business and when we do not know what we are doing and when there is no guiding light, if, if, if there's no one to say, hey, these things are going to happen and then they happen, these things are going to happen and it's still going to be okay, we can have confidence in what we are doing and we can understand that this is seasonal. This shall pass, but we have to be able to make it through it to the other side. And that there is a very, very important discussion as well. So when we have confidence in what we're doing, when we have a plan in what we are doing, it is much easier to navigate through the best times and it is much easier to navigate through the not as best times. So when we are forecasting, when we are planning, when we are making decisions based on our business, what has always served me personally best, and you guys could do whatever you wish, what always has served me best personally is I look at my handy dandy calendar and I go through this thing. And now that I have years worth of data, which one day I didn't have any data, I had to start this day one, no data, make my own data. But now that I have the data, I can look at this and say, okay, this is my best month. This is my second best month, all the way down to this is my worst month. I have had great success. Funding, planning, making all forecasting based on my worst month. If all of my forecasting is done based on the worst month, if all of my budgeting is done based on my worst month, if all of my planning is done based on my worst month, what does that mean? 
That means I will never expose myself to getting over leveraged and bust out because all of my planning is done based on my worst month. I don't know how many I can list. I don't know when I should increase my listing. I don't know if I should hire someone. I don't know if I should get a storage unit or a warehouse. That is very easy. Can your worst month afford it? Can your worst month profit-wise afford the increase in listings? Yes or no? Can your worst month profit-wise afford a storage unit? Yes or no? Can your worst month profit-wise afford a warehouse? Yes or no? And if the answer is yes, increase your listings. If the answer is yes, afford that employee. If the answer is yes, go get the storage unit. Because what happens the 11 months out of the year that are not your worst month? You are printing money and bringing wheelbarrows straight to the bank. Because all of our forecasting is done based on our worst month. We're still profitable worst month. And we can afford that listing increase. We can afford that employee. We can afford that storage unit. Still profitable worst month. So that means a better month than that. We are still profitable and even more profitable. Our third worst month, still profitable and even that much more profitable. Our 12th worst month, we are way profitable and still way profitable because we have forecasted and budgeted according to our worst month of the year. And when you have multiple years, your worst month is your worst month every single year. There is a pattern, there is a trend, and you can look at it and say, my worst month is this, it was up by this percent, up by this percent the year before, the year before, the year before, the year before. It almost becomes like clockwork because we have the data that gives us the confidence to make an informed decision to guide our business. If you budget based on your worst month and you still leave enough money, just like in the Techonomics video when I busted out the billboard, the, the whiteboard, if you budget based on your worst month, you will still have money for business savings, for things like taxes, for things like capital expenditure. Maybe you do have a warehouse and the air conditioner goes out. Those one-off time purchases, your CapEx, you do have a budget for your working capital, getting more money into the business, you know, maybe buying um, a new chair, maybe getting another doohickey, maybe increasing your listings. You still have money in that account. You still always get your original investment back. And then you still always allow you to pay yourself. If all of that is budgeted on your worst month, business savings are taken care of, working capital is good, uh, paying ourselves, our original investment is going back, our working capital allows us to increase, budgeted on our worst month, at the end of the next 11 months, we are going to have so much profit, it's going to be totally unbelievable. Where, if it's February, and we're looking at December and January, and we went out to Sizzler every single weekend because our sales were off the charts, and we're going to forecast based on D December and January when money's raining from the sky and we're selling Patagonias, we're selling North Faces. I can afford three employees. I can afford to list 150 a day. I'm signing a new three-year lease because the last couple of months I'm rocking and rolling. I'm living large. New Jordan steak dinners every night. Mark my words. Those same people are going to be crying the blues in the summertime because they've over leveraged themselves. And it's it's further out than having a couple good months or a good quarter or coming off of, you know, a good short piece of data that we're looking at. A lot of people that are busting out now in the year 2024 had fantastic 2020s, had fantastic 2021s. 2022, maybe not that bad. 2023, we're starting to creep down. 2024, things are tough. The people that are busting out now, in all facets of business, not just in reselling, not just in eBay, a large amount of the people that are busting out now got over leveraged a couple of years ago when money was raining from the sky, when stimulus was falling down, and, and we thought this is what eBay is forever. 
That is not what eBay is forever. That is not what eBay is ever going to be again until we get more stimulus checks running down from the sky. But if we had budgeted based on our worst year, our worst months, we would not be over leveraged and we would not be busting out. You can over leverage in your business, you can over leverage in your personal, and you can over leverage on both. The choice is yours ultimately. But if you base everything, all of your budgeting and spending off of your worst month, the odds of you busting out are very, very, very small. Look around. There, there's, there's companies going out of business all the time. Macy's said that they're going to close 150 stores. Um, Outback Steakhouse is closing 41 underperforming restaurants. There's, there was a lot of expansion during the good days of 2020, 2021. A lot of expansion. So much expansion that that a lot of companies we look around every single day are laying off a tremendous amount of people, are laying off a tremendous amount of staff. And what they are calling it, they are not calling it laying off. They are calling it right sizing. Right sizing. So they are right sizing. They, they got over leveraged. They got overextended. When the times were good, they did a bunch of hiring. Now they are right sizing. And right sizing goes a little bit further now. We need to get rid of a bunch of people because money is not raining from the sky anymore. And AI and new technology, not just AI, there's new technology that enters the workforce every single day. New technology is eliminating jobs. So due to being over leveraged and hiring a bunch of people, due to new technology, due to AI, we need to right size. We need to consolidate. We need to tighten our belts because the forecast, as we are seeing, because I'm a big company, I'm a Fortune 500 company, I keep my little calendar and I look at it every day, we can see where the trend is going. We can see it. So we need to make an informed decision today because even those big companies, the summer slowdown is coming. And someone in the comments pointed out on a, on a video a couple days ago, and I had forgot that I said this. Back in 2021, when we were talking about summer slowdown, I said, expect summer slowdown for the next three years. And here we are three years later. And sales ain't really popping the way that they once were. The Q4 bump that we used to be able to rely on pre-2020 when everything shut down, Back in 1918, 17, 16, you could expect a, a Q4 bump. I haven't seen it. And I've talked to thousands of resellers and I haven't seen the post in the last three or four years that said, I'm selling so many items that I can't control it. We always used to see that post. We always used to see that post in the middle of December. My sales are gangbusters. They're out of control. I can't keep up. We don't see that post no more. So as we talked about three years ago, expect the summer slowdown. We are in that, that valley, peaks and valley. There's seasonality with everything. When I first started, it was 2008, in the middle of a housing crisis. A lot of people lost 50% of their house value. The stock market lost upwards of 57%. It was tough. We were involved in two wars. That was a valley. But inside of every single valley, there, there comes a peak. Everything is, is like a wave. Everything is a circle. Everything is cylindrical. It goes up. It goes down. So you, we, we have to survive the down times in order to get up to the up times. And if you can survive the down times when there's blood in the street, if you can survive that, the good times are good. But if you can't survive the downtime, you never get the opportunity to get to the good time. And in order to survive the downtime, us too, we too, we have to tighten our belts. We have to be smart. We have to make good decisions. Because the people that we see around us at the bins, our competition at the flea market, that one guy who we always see at garage sales, these people are going to start to fade away. Because they're not keeping track of their numbers. They're, they're not making the right decisions for their business. They're coming off of three great months in Q4 and January. Big deal. Big whoop. We run on averages of a business. We are not in business for only three months. We are in business for 12. So we need to have a good fundamental understanding of what we can afford in our business 
And in my personal opinion, you guys are free to do whatever you want to do. I'm sitting here with 15 years of experience. I'm sitting here where I never had a year where I didn't make a tremendous amount of money. And I'm sitting here saying, this is what works for me. And I rarely come on here and tell people what works for me. I rarely come on here and talk about my business. Everything about this video, about all the videos that I put out, everything that I put on out on social media is only meant for lessons to help other people. I don't make calls based on me, 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 I, 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 I. I don't do that. Everything that I put out is just meant to help. But I am telling you here in this instance, what has worked for me personally is basing my business budget on my least performing month. Now, your least performing month is still a great month. But we cannot base our budget on up here when we have months that are below that. Because if we do, if we base our budget right in the middle of what our year is, that is a break-even business. Because half the years we make, or half the months we make money, half the months we lose money, that is a break-even business. If we base our spending off of our best month, that is a business that loses money. If we base our business on our worst month, that is a business that makes money. Does everybody understand that? We have 12 months. Some of them are not good. Some of them are good. Half of them are going to be better than the bottom half, mathematically speaking. If we base our business and our spending and our budget right here in the middle, that is a business that breaks even. Half the months make money. The other half loses all the money that we made. If we base our business up here, top of the top, that is a business that loses money. If we base our business and all of our spending and forecasting right here, that is a business that makes a tremendous amount of profit. Again, the choice is yours. So we need to get to the point where we have these calendars, we have these data, we have these resources. eBay gives us a tremendous amount of data. Be sure to take advantage of that. But we need to start keeping records. So I've given you a few, a few ways on how to offset the summer slowdown. For one, stock items that people are looking for. Two, offsets what your weak points are inside of your business. Number three, keep your records, know what's coming, be prepared, have that working capital, have that business savings, and always, always, always make sure that you know what the market is going to do. So let me go to the Terapeak machine, which is a very, very valuable resource. And how can we learn about seasonality? So in here, I put men's jackets. I've edited it to the last three years. I've edited it to the coats, jackets, and vest. And the condition filter I've put into pre-owned. So it's going to think. It's going to do its thing. And this is what's great about the Terapeak machine. It'll tell you the average sale price. Excellent. But this is the data that we're looking at right here. Down, up, down, up, down, up. So if you are listing a bunch of jackets and you are heavy jackets and in the month of June, we see that that is a valley. It's the same thing right here. Here's June. That is a valley. Guess what? Over here in June, that is a valley. Our peaks for jackets are going to correspond with the cooler seasons. Starts to trend on, up in September, starts to fall in March. Trends up in September, falls in March. Trends up in September, and right now we're getting a, we're going to approach the fall. We have already approached the fall. So this is how we can look at our items, look at our store, look at the mix of our store. And if we are a hundred percent jackets, you you did great. You did as great as you're going to do this year, because coming up here we're going to see a low. Next we can go into men's sweaters. Last three years the condition filter is pre-owned again, and what do we see? We see similar results. If you have a bunch of sweaters and your store is all sweaters in the month of June, I have bad news for you because right here, it'll tell you last year on June 26th, only 3,000 sweaters sold on the entire eBay.com platform. Meanwhile, sweaters in November and December, they do great. 16,000 sold on one day, November 27th, June 26th, only 3,000. And what do we see again? A valley and a peak. A valley, peak, valley, peak. Next one, men's shorts. 
Let's take a guess. The peaks and valleys are probably going to be inverse of what we just looked at here, right? We can expect our shorts to be peaking, valleying. Peaking, valley, peak, valley. Let's see. What do we have? Peak, valley, peak, valley, peak, valley. So here you go. In May, go time. In May, they do very well. In May, they do very well. Where in November, not so good. November, not so good. December, not so good. So if we put these charts on top of each other, they would lay flat against each other, and that would be a flat business, a very healthy business that is going to offset the summer slowdown. Right here, if we had shorts, shorts are going to be peaking, shorts are going to be falling. Peaking, falling, peaking, falling. That would be a more healthy business. We could do the same thing for men's jeans. Men's jeans have peaks and valleys. However, it's not as aggressive as it is for the jackets, as it is for the sweaters, as it is for the shorts. So jeans and men's jeans are more flat line. However, there are still peaks and there are still valleys. So in order to have a good product mix, we need to have a good idea of what inventory we are carrying. So here's another thing that is very important that I want people to notice by looking at this. We like to talk about that our items are not selling, the buyers are not on the platform, it's not how it used to be. We like to talk a lot about that, which is fine. We could talk about that, but we have to have data to back it up. Back here in the good old days of 2021, on the worst month, 3,245, June 21st. If we go over here and find June 21st over here, about 9,000 sold. Three times as many sold in the last three years. Look at the velocity and the volume of the shopping that has been on eBay. 25,000 compared to the best day under 12,000. The velocity of shopping on eBay has gone up tremendously. Look at the trajectory line, this gray line, this black line. There are three times as many items being sold these days when it comes to jackets as there was back here two or three years ago. Let's look at sweaters. Sweaters, our best day, world record day, 8,000. Now we're up here touching 15,000. Double the amount of items are selling today than they once were. Let's look at shorts. World record day back then, 11,000 items. Up here, we're up in the 20,000s almost, double. Double the amount of items are selling today versus a couple of years ago. Let's look at jeans. World record day back in the day, we're at about 10,000. Up here, we're getting close to, we're over 20,000 very consistently, double the amount of sales. So the buyers are buying. Pre-owned is more acceptable. There are more options on the market. Can you imagine following this line all the way down here back to 2008 when I was selling? There might have been 40 items that sold as far as men's jeans go back in the day. Now, men's jeans are selling over 20,000 pairs per day pre-owned. So when we talk about, I don't know if online selling or eBay is sustainable, look at the trajectory with, with where things are going. Look at all of this. There's way more shoppers buying items. Now, net-net, is there more shoppers on eBay? You could look at the data. eBay says, you know, we're down 2% in, in active users. Fine, no problem. But the users that are active are buying items. More items than they did last year, more items than they did before, according to the Terapeak machine. So... We have the opportunity, we know what to do, we need to make a plan, and we need to execute. So we've gone over preparing for the summer slowdown. We know it's coming. I know it's coming. We're having this conversation today. It is coming. It is a guarantee. There will be a summer slowdown for your business. It might be in the winter. 
I don't know. Every business is different. Historically for me, it's about the end of May until no until November. That that's probably my slowest times. And then November it starts picking up. And then December, January, February, March, April, May, it starts to kind of kick down a little bit. And May is when I personally take advantage of my aged inventory markdown process. So we need to be able to have strategies. We need to be able to have things that we are focusing on, that we are thinking about, and that we are ready to implement. A couple of things that we can also implement during the slow times. We can go back into our listings and we can rework them. We can fix our keywords. We can fix our title structure. We can fix our pricing because there's also seasonality and pricing. We can make sure our item specifics are, are giving us the best bang for the buck. Um, we can make sure that we're keeping an eye on our budget. We can make sure that we have a good spending budget, a good sourcing budget. We can make sure that we're not over leveraging. A lot of people that we see that are over leveraged are over leveraged because they are not disciplined enough when they are going out there and they are shopping. So they are spending more than A, what they are listing and B, what they are selling. That's why when the question always comes in, how do I know when I can increase my listings? And it's very simple. There's two criteria that we must assess. Number one, when your business can afford it. That is the first criteria. And if we don't know when our business can afford it, please watch the video with the blackboard on it that says techonomics. Secondly, when I can do so without screwing it up. What is screwing it up? Am I going to speed through all of my listings because I'm on a crunch and not make quality listings? Great way to screw it up. Am I going to have a bunch of stuff listed? I don't have time to process it and put it away in my inventory. So now I have a bunch of items listed. They're not put away in inventory. They're for sale. They sell. And now I can't find them. And now when they do sell and I can't find them, now I have to cancel it for being out of stock. Am I listing more items and being not as careful, maybe a little more careless, where now I'm missing defects and people are getting it and now my item not as described rate goes up? Did my return rate go up? Are my defects trending up? All of these things we need to keep track of. Again, we need to have the data to keep track of these things. So if your business can afford it, and if you can do it without screwing up, you can list however many items you want to list. But if your business cannot afford it, and if you cannot do it without screwing up, then you need to stay where you are. So a good way to see whether your business can, can handle it or not is to kind of run a stress test on the business. And I think for most people, the the easiest default stress test to run on the business, and most people, they don't ship over the weekends. They wait till Monday to ship. The biggest stress test is on those three-day weekends. We just came off of one for President's Day, is when we didn't ship Saturday, didn't ship Sunday, didn't ship Monday, and now Tuesday is here, and we have a bunch of shipping to do. We love to post a picture of all those sales, even say weekend sales, but it was a three-day weekend. Anyways, weekend sales, that is a good stress test. When we have Saturday, Sunday, and Monday shipping, what do we get done that Tuesday? Can we ship everything out on Tuesday and still get our listings up, still get our photos up, still source? Or are we swamped and consumed by doing all of the shipping where we don't get our photos up, don't get our listings up, don't get our sourcing done? If we are swamped and don't get it done, then we have failed the stress test. If we can do it and get it done, then we need to evaluate, is this something that I could do every day? And if it is something that you can do every day, I can ship this many items, then make that day your everyday day. If not, don't go there because you're going to screw it up. You're going to have late shipments. You're going to have defects. You're going to have your return rate is going up. It's going to only cost you problems. It's only going to cost you time and it's only going to cost you money. So that is a good default stress test. Um, so there's a lot of things that we have to understand we are, when we are running our business. And it's the same. It's the same for me for my brick and mortar store. There's seasonality. For me, at the brick and mortar store, the summertime is more busy than, let's say, the wintertime. Why is it more busy for my brick and mortar store? 
For one, the kids are out of school and they need somewhere to go. So they come to the store. But the biggest reason why, two reasons. People come down here to visit. So while they're visiting, they come by the store. They usually spend a good amount of money when they're there because they're only going to be there once. That's the first reason. For second reason is everyone comes home from college and those people come in and they shop. And if they're in college, they have a little bit more disposable income probably than a high schooler or a younger kid. And they're back in town. So my buyer pool is much larger for my personal demographic for my brick and mortar store. I got the people coming down, spending big money when they come for vacation. And everybody is home back from college during the summertime. And they come by the store to load up on their vintage so that way they can go back to school and they can be looking fly. So the summertime for my brick and mortar store is a good time. The winter time, it's okay. It's still great. I, I forecast all of my budgeting and all of my business on my worst month, of course. But the winter time is not as good as the summer. So, so it's inverse. It's opposite. And that's okay. As long as I know that. For my landscape company, the winter time is where I make all the money. And you ask yourself, how? How is that possible? It's, it's very easy. In the summertime in Florida, it rains every single day at 4 o'clock. You can set your watch. It's going to rain for 20 minutes. Sometimes it rains for a couple days in a row. In the wintertime, it never rains. In the summer, you can bet your bottom dollar you're going to get at least some rain at 4 o'clock. I like the guys to come home at 5. But when it rains, we go home. You can't cut grass in the rain. It's pouring. It's lightning. It's thundering. We are the lightning strike capital of the world. I can't have guys out there cutting grass. So I lose time. I lose time, but I still pay because they're on the clock. So we're not cutting grass. So we get a little bit backed up maybe, especially if we have three, four, five, one week of rain. We do the best we can, but we get a little bit backed up. So now what do I have to do? We have to start cutting grass on Saturdays, maybe even start cutting grass on Sundays. When you have to pay guys who have worked Monday through Friday on Saturday and Sunday, that gets into time of time and a half. So the money isn't as great as if they were on schedule and could complete their entire day without any interference from Mother Nature. I know this. Did I know this my first year? Not as well as I do today because I've kept records and I've paid attention to it. Now, in the wintertime, never rains. And this is a secret. In the wintertime, since it never never rains and it's cooler out and the sun is further away due to the, the, the winter solstice, the grass doesn't grow as fast. And since the grass doesn't grow as fast, you don't need to spend as much time taking care of the customer's lawn because you can come back in two weeks and it's the exact same way as, as you left it. But in the, in the summertime, when you come back in 10 days, it's a jungle. You've trimmed it all down. You fought. You conquered it. It looks beautiful. It could be on the cover of a magazine. When you come back in 10 days, it looks like a jungle has taken over. It looks like Jumanji. So we have to spend way more time out there. The weeds grow way faster and need treatment. The vines are coming down. It literally looks like Jumanji sometimes. So we have to spend more time, more care to make it look like a magazine cover again. In the wintertime, no rain. It's not killer hot. And you leave that thing looking like a magazine cover, you come back in 10 days, two weeks, still looks like a magazine cover. So you walk around, turn on the blade of the engine, turn the blower on, and you see them again in two weeks again. And guess what? The price is the same month over month. So the more profitable time for my business personally, aside from any sort of hurricane or outlier, just strictly cutting grass, is going to be the winter time. Because in the summertime, I'm paying guys time and a half on Saturday to catch up. The rain rains us out. It's much more work. So the seasonality is different for every single business. If you ran a, a, a Halloween store, your best month is going to be October. It ain't going to be March. So you have to understand the seasonality. There are seasonalities and cycles with everything. With money, with business, with fashion. Stuff that's coming back today is from... The year 2000, low rises coming back. It's all over the news. It's going crazy. There's cycles. Everything is cylindrical. When something is not cool, 
somebody will make it cool because it's not cool. And then it becomes cool. And then when it's cool, the people who made it cool, they're going to go do the opposite because now being cool is not cool. That's how the that's how fashion works. That's how the world works. If something's not cool, I'm going to make it cool. Now that you're doing it, it's not cool. So I'm going to do the opposite. That's the way it works. That's how the world goes around. And that's why money and coins are round because money goes around. And you have to be able to make the money go around if you want your business to stay around. So we need to be very, very, very smart. We need to know our budgets and we need to have a good fundamental understanding of what exactly our business is in the best times and what exactly our business is in the worst times. And if we do not know, then we are in big trouble, my friends. We are in big trouble. So please, everybody, take a few minutes this week. Take a few minutes this month. Please gain an understanding of seasonality. Gain an understanding of our money. And if we base our business off of our worst month, we will never, ever run into issues. We will never, ever run into problems. So thank you, everybody out there. I appreciate you checking us out this week. If you ever have any questions, send me a message on Instagram. If you have any questions, post it below. I respond to everything. Thank you so much, everybody. Be great.